Hey there, everybody. Adam Cleary from 442 here. Yes, sat wearing a hoodie in August because it's so cold. And that's bad, isn't it? But I'll tell you what's not bad. Levi Colwell, because he's good. Not as good as that intro, but... In fact, he's so good that I would go so far as to say that by not loaning him back to Brighton, by making him sign a new six-year contract, by fending off the interest of a host of top European clubs, he could actually be Chelsea's signing of the summer so far. And I know he's not technically a signing, obviously he's their player, but when you give someone a contract, you do have to physically sign it, so that's, that's what I'm getting at. It's a play on words. Alright, so before we start, not to toot my own cock or anything, but when Pochettino signed for Chelsea, I did this video and said this. Levi Colwell on loan at Brighton. Pochettino will love that kid. He will 100% be back and you will see him in this team quite a lot, I think. And it certainly looks like he does going off pre-season. He missed the Wrexham game for Chelsea with coming back from international duty, but then he got a full 81 minutes against Brighton, 45 minutes against Fulham, the entire match against Dortmund and missed the Newcastle game for having a lovely rest. And while we still don't know exactly how Pochettino is going to set Chelsea up come the start of the season, that Dortmund game does look a fairly good indication. And this was their lineup. Colwell and Silva do feel, for all the world, like the best possible centre back pairing they've got right now. But why is that? Why all the hype on Colwell? Is it just the England under 21's performance? Is it the fact that Chelsea's other centre back pairings would make me look like a viable option? No, there is definitely something here. And that something is just this wonderful blend of really intelligent defensive fundamentals, some elite level ball playing ability and just look at him, look at him, the guy is so big and tough and dependable is it any wonder they named him after a pair of jeans? So last season while on loan, Colwell got a really good run of games for Brighton at centre back next to Lewis Dunk and as I and every other football channel has covered to death, Brighton's deserve ball system last year was so 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 reliant on the quality of its centre backs. If you didn't see it, I'll give you the quick skim version, basically they're really involved in the build up, you use the goalkeeper as well, the idea is you get all these little triangles going, you invite the opposition to press you as high as they are willing to do, and then whatever opportunity opens up, and it could be any one of the forward players dropping back, it could just be one pass between the lines, the defenders, Dunk and Colwell, it was their responsibility to spot that and play that. And that means two things, you've got to be really comfortable receiving the ball under pressure and playing these neat, tidy little passes around your own area with the players in, sort of in five or, or ten yards, but more important than that, when the opportunity avails itself, and it could be absolutely anywhere on the pitch, you have to be able to play that decisive killer ball. That is not a situation you would naturally think you would want to put a 20-year-old with virtually no Premier League experience into, and yet De Zerbi did, and yet Colwell was amazing at it. Like I mentioned before, progressive passes out of defence, they are the new hotness in football. They allow you to skip entire phases of your own build-up, they allow you to beat presses, they allow you to throw other teams that are incredibly well organised into chaos, and Colwell... Well, have a look at this. Obviously, his general passing stats are really impressive and show how good he is at the small stuff, at the tidy stuff, but his key passes are amazing. His passes into the final third, his progressive passes. There were virtually no centre-backs in the Premier League who were doing that as consistently and as well as Colwell was. Now, OK, you might be thinking, well, Colwell was playing for Brighton last season. You know, that's just their system. Anyone in it would have these similar kind of numbers. And when you compare it to Dunk, yes, the neat and tidy stuff is fairly similar, but you can see the key passes is nowhere near the same. Clearly, Colwell's got a little bit more of an edge but what really sets him apart not just from his Brighton teammates but from pretty much everyone in Europe is his ability to carry out of the back. Now I think as we all saw last season with John Stones having a defender who was comfortable carrying the ball up the pitch not just passing it out of defence is really important and actually vital for any team that wants to play on the front foot but Colwell doesn't just carry that ball out of defence and into the midfield he just keeps going, he carries and he carries and he carries until he all of a sudden is just playing. And again, where a player like Stones would then get in the middle and sort of contribute to being an extra man, to the neat and tidy stuff, to helping with the attacking phase, Colwell is very happy simply being the attacking phase. His ability to find runners with really precise through the line passes, his ability to exploit a high defensive line is just... Well, look at this, he's in the top 1% in Europe last season for assists from centre-backs. Like, you've played FPL, right? How often do you see your centre-back get an assist and it's not just like a weird knockdown from a corner? Almost never. And what is the one thing Chelsea currently have in abundance? It's attacking midfielders who love, 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 love 
to get behind defenders, to receive through balls in that area. Not, not loads of build-up on the edge of the box. They don't like trying to break down really deep defenses. They want teams to sit with the high line so they can exploit the space. And in Thiago Silva's incredible over-the-top passing range and Levi Colwell's sort of short, incisive through balls, you've now got two deadly weapons for that. And weirdly, if you actually look at them both, Thiago Silva does actually profile weirdly similarly to Lewis Dunk. And that might sound ridiculous. It might even sound ridiculous, but in terms of the way they both play, Colwell's a perfect foil for the boat. And that's why it's important not just to talk about his passing or his ball carrying, as exciting as that is, but his ability to defend, because he's excellent at it. Like for Brighton, Dunk would tend to be the one who stepped out of defence to try and engage the opponent to put the pressure on and Colwell would then cover him behind. He would watch the space. He would make sure that if Dunk got beat or a pass went round him, that he was covering that space. His reading of the game for doing that is so far above the levels you would expect of a 20-year-old. His composure in the tackle is so far ahead of what you would expect for a 20-year-old. Like look at, look at this stat. He is in the bottom 1% for tackles in all of Europe because he just doesn't make them. What he does is he stands up and he stands up and he stands up and he only commits to a challenge when he's pretty much certain he's going to be able to make it. And even when he does do that, he doesn't dive in, he doesn't go off his feet. He's got this amazing technique of staying shoulder to shoulder with a player and then effectively adjusting his stride to get a little half a yard and just step across. This is just my favourite clip of his in regards to defending, right? Brighton are in all kinds of trouble here. Any 20-year-old, any 35-year-old would get a rush of blood, would get a rush of adrenaline, would realise it's all on you now, Adam. I mean, Levi, and dash across, put a tackle in, and potentially create even more problems. But he doesn't do that, does he? He moves across to deal with Nketiah, because obviously that's his job, that's where the danger is, but he doesn't even come close to engaging him. He just stops him having a clean run through on goal, and leaves enough distance between the two that the shadow cover he's offering, which is like, if you draw a line out, it's the area you can't pass to, and the further back you are, the wider that is, basically blocks off any pass whatsoever. It's just, like, you cannot coach that. You're either good enough to be able to do that in that moment, or you're not. Like Chelsea fans, you don't need me to tell you Koulibaly was a disaster last year. He just loved charging out and putting in tackles and just thoughtlessly doing stuff. Colwell could not be more the thematic opposite to a player like that. He's just up here. He's got it all. Now, I will just caveat all of this by saying, please remember he is 20 years old. He is half Thiago Silva's age almost. He is by no means the finished product just yet. Like, his ball-carrying ability is excellent, and he loves to do it, but his dribbling technique itself, which is obviously a slightly different thing, still leaves a little bit to be desired. He can kind of get a bit lost with it sometimes, and while his passing is incisive and he's got a really good eye for it, his longer balls, like his switches of play or his just really, really direct ones, they're not quite there yet. And also, not that this one should matter too much, if you're a Chelsea fan and you did watch the Dortmund game last night, his finishing could be could be better yes oh and one um one final point he is naturally left-footed he's a left-sided center back who's naturally left-footed with a great range of passing and a brain so if i'm harry Maguire, i'm sweating anyway chelsea fans yes i think you've got an absolute diamond on your hands here and by the looks of it i think maurizio pochettino agrees who could blame him but i mean saying that if you are a chelsea fan you may have seen slightly more of him in pre-season than i did i don't know the bits i saw he looked excellent and i watched all of the under 21 euros so that's what i think but if it seems a little bit off or even if it seems a little bit on please do get it in the comments below and i mean come on subscribe to 442 the new season start and it's dead exciting but if you just rather argue with me face to face you can get me on twitter instagram threads at adam cleary c l e r y 442 as well every single way you could possibly look and the season preview edition which is previewing the season which is happening now is in stores also now till next time though that's it adam cleary 442 levi colwell big big fan see you soon goodbye